and you guys tell me what you think is cool. But that's like, that's Ross Cop's entire series. That was the first, I believe one of the first sequential graphics in skateboarding. And um, so we ended up doing five total. First one came out in 84. Last one probably in the 89, I think it was, maybe 90. And then a lot of these are original, original artwork. You can see the ink, you can see the white, the white out in some sections. And a lot of times Phillips, Jim would draw graphics much bigger than they ended up being on the product itself, right? So, for example, this graphic here, Ross Cops 5, you know, obviously the board wasn't that big, so he'd draw really big because he'd have so much detail in it. And even, even like bullet wheel graphics sometimes were, you know, he, I know one that was at least a foot, foot and a half big right. and then that ended up becoming down to a 66 right. millimeter wheel. This one's pretty cool. This is a Street Creek graphic that came out in probably 87, maybe 88. And if you look closely, there's a lot of faces in here. Novak's face There's a bunch of, you know, iconic people within that graphic. And the street creep, that was a team board. It was a team board. It was one of the few team boards that, you know, back, back then, we, it was mostly pro models. Mm -hmm. And there weren't that many in the line at any given time. This was one of, the, one of the team boards that we did. And again, he drew it super big. That graphic was probably about 50, 60% right. its size when they ended up putting it on the board. So this is something that we used to do. This is probably 80, let's see if it says 87 down here. This one, that one's 90. So this is probably maybe, yeah, not 87, Knox Turn Pro in like 89, 90, but they'd actually sketch out the ad before they laid it out. So Ross Goodman doing his minor thread impression. So this was a Jaya. This is back in 92, 93, maybe even 91, but back then all, all boards were pretty much slick. So this is a slick graphic for Jaya with Bush running naked from the White House. Some pissed off civilians. I mean, skateboarding was really small at that time. Right. And so we probably made 500. Right. So it was small run stuff. Here's an old ad of Tim Brosh. He broke his wrist, <clears throat> threw his x-ray in there. I used to shoot all, all the ad photos in, in the early 90s, and these are some of my, my first ones. So this one, I kind of got lucky shooting straight into the sun. But right. yeah, Thomas Campbell sorted me out, man. He gave me a Quick tutorial, it was super simple. I needed it to be super simple, and it was really all I needed to know to, to shoot, you know, photos were, good enough for were ads. You doing team stuff? Were you doing yeah, yeah, that was when I was, right as a team, as a team um, manager, I did all the video and the, and the photos. So a lot of this stuff here, I mean, there's, there's almost one of, of everything that was produced, right. screened and even otherwise here. There's no real order. Some of it's somewhat chronological, but there's reissues up here, but there's originals as well. So this, the free, I wish Dave was here because he, he could tell this story better, but this, this table right here, probably 80, 83, 82, so they'd take the ink, you know, they're obviously pulling one color at a time. So this is from the ink that they'd pour on the screens. Back then the screens were flat. 
it's just like spilt over ink, but this table is still in operation in, for almost 30 years now, or over 30 years. Here's the boot, this is the bootleg section right here. Some graphics over here. Now a lot of these are original creature graphics. I remember if that was Navarette's first model. I, I think a Four Horsemen was his first model, but that one was pretty early on. Fernandez, that was his first and only graphic, I think. So you see, Creature had a different look in the, you know, back then. It's much more defined now and easy to spot in the waters, primarily green and black, right? So the graphics conceptually had, you know, a consistency. Right. The, the look, color palette is not as defined as it is now with right. Creature, but yeah, those are some of the first boards. That Nautis graphic was one that was mid-80s, maybe. He wasn't too fond of that graphic, so I don't think NHS ever produced that one, but we have one up there that was produced by Skip. And then there's a handful of different Nautilus models that we did over the years. Here's two, um, these two graphics here are pre, one's pre and one's post cease and desist. You can see one looks a little bit too much like a character that so this is the tweaked version. So, let's see. Old ads, old ad rubies, how it used to be done. Or not rubies, but different color films. They were printed off that? CMYK, used to do it, right? Old photos, old speed wheels ad. I mean, there's like a lot of really old stuff in here. Like I was talking about stuff being drawn really big. <clears throat> I think that was a t-shirt. Obviously a little large for a t-shirt. Here's half of an original slime ball wheel inking. Look at the size of that. There's so much detail in there. Here's an old Grosso. Enjoy. Graphic. The face wasn't on there originally, so it was like, um, they'd use these to burn the screens. So obviously when they burn in the screens, they didn't put that on there. It was just the Santa Cruz. Another, um, another graphic that got the attention of a much larger corporation than ourselves. Let's see. So that was the very first Santa Cruz board. Fiberglass. Loose ball bearings. I believe. So these are Phillips sketches of some of the earliest Santa Cruz logos. Um, would have been 74, 75, variations of, you know, doing something that was different than the classic dot. But that font was always, that S and that C was always a part of every one of the original pieces of work, or most of them. Stage one, hangers were really pretty narrow. 
easier to bend and break. Slowly the stage just got thicker and thicker. The wing version in like a five. It sturdied it up quite a bit. Old hole pattern. Then, you know, introducing the new hole pattern and old. And to the point now where I think stages eight through 11s just have the new hole pattern. Most people won't remember that truck bolts used to sit that far up on the hanger on the base plate. I mean, when I was a kid, I had a bunch of old skateboarders from an older friend of mine that kind of got me into skating to begin with. And that was the ad that I would see in Skateboarder Mag. I forget which issue that was in. It was one of these right here, I believe. So that would have been like early 80s, maybe. 82. So Dwayne, Eric Halverson, Olson. So this goes from, this is like 85, right here. 86, Mickey's. That, I believe, was Mickey's first, Steve's brother, Mickey Alma. And then, check out that front side area. It's pretty much upside down. Phil's ramp back in the mid-80s. <clears throat> but no, that was my first. And this is original inking, so you could see a lot of the white out stuff. But I was a little obsessed with um, Nuclear Holocaust and saw a show called The Day After. It was made for TV movie back in the early 80s, maybe. Pretty affected by that. That's where the graphic concept came from. But that was my original. So Santa Cruz was the first to really do like unique concaves for different pro models. Salba had a concave that was you can see it here on this board. A linear kind of a box concave. That, that was really extreme back in the early 80s. Olsen had a different concave that was similar to this street skate. And the way the concaves were designed back then is you could really see. They weren't, they weren't like smooth transition. It was pretty distinct lines where the concave would start. So when this came out, that was by far the steepest. And I remember standing on that as a kid and a friend of mine had one. It was just like, you almost felt like the bottom, the balls of your feet weren't even touching the board because it was so extreme for that, for that time. And so when we reissued this, <clears throat> it was one of the first reissue concaves that we had to recreate in order to do it right. We had to recreate the concave because the others were, we had similar concaves to most of the boards. But with this one, we had to recreate it. So we took, an actual version, digitized it, made the concave, did the mold exactly as it was back then. But because concaves have gone through so many different changes over the years, we had people that bought the reissue and they were like, you guys blew it. Like, why? This, this isn't as steep as it used to be. Why did you do it this way? This is nothing like it was. And it's exactly like it was. But it was so extreme at the time that, you know, guys that have bought it 30 years later are just like, no, that's not right. That's not right. right.